Hi everyone, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to draw a horse muzzle or a horse nose in pastels. Now I'm going to make this a step-by-step -step tutorial showing you the individual layers and the different processes that I like to use when tackling this element on a horse drawing. Now like when I draw the eyes, I always like to make sure that my first step is mapping in the shape of the nostrils. This is going to be one of those elements with any animal where if the nostrils are not in the right position and they're not the right shape, it's going to really draw the viewer's eye to that. It's quite noticeable when there's a mistake happen there. So my first aim is I do want to make sure that I've got that right early on. Now all I'm using here is just a black Carbofello pencil to do that and you'll notice that I'm being quite light handed with this layer. I'm not trying to make this the darkest value early on, that's not my aim, I can do that with my additional layers. All I want to do as I say is just reinforce the correct shape and you can also see I'm now starting to curve my pencil strokes following the shape of the nostril. Now I have lots of tutorials here on YouTube and the in-depth versions on Patreon and I really do go in-depth on how to build up the 3D shape of the nose. Now for me, I think that all starts with the nostrils because every single nostril, regardless of the shape of the nose on any animal, it will always curve over a surface. So it's that curve by getting my darks and my lights in the right place and moving my pencil in the right way that's going to replicate that. So I do want to make sure that I'm studying that reference photo and following those things very closely. So while I'm going to carry on layering in my darkest parts of the surrounding sections of the nostril, you can still see that I'm moving the pencils in the curve of the nose. This is already starting to indicate at that three dimensional shape. Now what I've done here, back to real time, and I am now starting to map in the mid tones. Now I talk about layers and the layering process in all of my tutorials. This is something that I do feel very strongly about. It's the best way of building up depth. Now one thing that I do want to quickly mention is you are going to see that my hand here is moving and that's because I'm explaining what I'm doing for my Patreon tutorial. This was all created with a voiceover while I'm working. So on Patreon, the entire real-time tutorial of this chestnut horse is available there now and you get the reference photo, line art and full material list, all of the pencils that I have used to create this drawing. So if that's of interest, I will link my Patreon in the description below. So going back to those layers that I've just mentioned, now this is if I'm drawing skin or if I'm drawing fur, any element, the leather bridle, all of those things take layers. It's no good jumping into our brightest highlights and just working with two or three layers and expecting something that's going to be very hyper-realistic or photo-realistic. We do want to be making sure that we're building up the depth gradually. So I was really happy with the shape that I'd built up around the nostril. I'm indicating at my lights and my darks and I do feel like I'm now showing how that nostril curves over onto the rest of the nose. So my next step here is I'm going to map in the shape of the top lip. Now horse lips are very different to most other animals and they do have these little creases. They're only very short but they do have these creases on that top lip and they will also have some towards the back section of the lower lip. Now I want to make sure that I'm moving my pencil in the direction of those creases. Not because I can't add those creases later on, because that's the wonderful thing about pastels, we can mix these layers between our lights and our darks as much as we want. However, I do find it really helps to build up a bit of that muscle memory where we're already studying those wrinkle directions and eventually the, the fur detail directions early on. This is going to help to then follow that reference photo closely and I do feel that that then means that our drawing is going to be more realistic and more accurate. So now that I've mapped in the shape of the top lip and the bottom lip just by hinting at where my main darks and my mid-tones are, I'm now going to start with working on the pan pastel base layer for the rest of the nose. Now if you're having a horse that's a little bit more front on and you can see both nostrils, I would do the same process for the other nostril as well. But because this horse is a little bit more of a side profile, you can only really see one of them. So I went in now with my pan pastel base layer. 
Now, one of the biggest tips when using pan pastels and one of the questions that I'm asked more frequently is how do I avoid filling the tooth of the paper? Now, I do feel that pan pastels can fill the tooth of the paper easier than some other methods, but there are ways that we can know how to avoid that from happening. Now, because pan pastels blend beautifully, they have wonderful colour saturation. They are so nice to work with. I personally do prefer them for my pan, for my base layer. However, I always want to be making sure that I'm never loading too much pastel on that paper on this first layer. The biggest tip for knowing how much pastel to apply is you do still want to be able to see your transfer lines or your sketch lines through this pan pastel base layer. What we don't want to be doing is having another layer of pan pastel on the top where we're trying to get our colour more accurate to the reference photo. That's what our pencil layers are for. If we carry on applying the pan pastel like that, adding one, two, three, four, and all these layers on top, eventually that pastel is going to be so thick that the paper is going to be completely smooth and then we can't go in with our additional layers with those details using our pastel pencils. So most of the time I will always just do one layer with my pan pastels, in some cases two, but I work with very light layers when I do use the pan pastels. And because I've got a palette camera on the corner of my Patreon tutorials, it allows members to see exactly how much of each colour I'm applying and how I'm mixing them on my spare sheet of paper. Because I would never recommend to pick up the pan pastel on your applicator and apply that directly to your art paper. Because that again is another way of loading lots of pastel pigment in one area and then you will fill the tooth of the paper. Now one thing that you can see here as well is if you look at the top above the nostril where I'm just now starting to use this orange pencil you can still see a lot of the white of the pastel matte paper showing through. This again is another good way of knowing how much pan pastel we should be using for that first layer. We just don't want to be adding loads of layers keeping on trying to get our darks really dark or then our brights really bright with our pan pastels because again just like if we're trying to get the colour exactly right by adding lots of layers with that pan pastel it's just a real easy way of filling the tooth of the paper. It will significantly limit how much detail and therefore how much realism we can get in our portraits. So my next stage once I was happy with my base layer this is now where I start using my pastel pencils. Now what I'm starting to do here is tidy up my base layer. I am hinting at where my main lights and darks are. Again, I'm not focusing on the exact colour. I can do that with my future layers. But I do want to make sure that I've got my lights and my darks accurate and that I've got a nice smooth layer. One of the easiest ways of limiting how much depth we can get with any element is by having harsh start and stop points in our base layers. One thing that happens very easily is, for me personally, I like getting all of the detail work in because I think it builds up more of that realism within the portrait. So in that case, we can have a tendency to jump to those details too soon. But here, again, with building up the curve and shape of the nose, where I'm reinforcing my contrast by making my shadows darker, and now with the creases on the top lip, I'm starting to reinforce my highlights. If I start jumping to my details early on without adding in these subtle layers, there is not going to be the same degree of depth built up. So the layering process is so important, and if you do know that you jump into details too early on, Try and add in, maybe give yourself a rule, add in two or three more layers before you get to that point and it'll be a really nice way of holding yourself back. So by preventing yourself from adding in those details, you're probably going to end up with a portrait that's more three-dimensional in the long run. So it's at this step here where I want to start building in some of those details. Now again, just like about how we want to prevent ourselves from jumping into the details too early on, what we want to be doing at this stage is not adding our brightest highlights too early on either. If you look at a reference photo and you notice the brightest, lightest hairs first, that's a layer that you need to leave until the end. Because if you were to stroke that animal, those would be the hairs that you would touch first. So with that in mind, it's a layer that needs to be sat on the very top. 
So that's just something that helps us to add in more depth with the portrait. Not just reinforcing our contrast, but it is about knowing which layer to draw first, which ones to leave until the end. So before I move on to building up more of our detailed layers, because these layers are really important, I would just like to ask that if this video and the tips and techniques that I've shared so far have been useful, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. It means then that YouTube can share it with more people. So I also upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you would like to get notified of that content, then hit that subscribe and the bell button. Okay, so these tiny little hairs on the edge of the nostril. Because I recorded this for the Patreon tutorial, which was all in real time, as I've said, I was able to explain to my Patreon members exactly how to use this pencil in order to create these very thin, fine lines. Because pastel pencils can often get a bit of a, a bad rep for creating grainy or thick details. And that really isn't the case. It's all about how you hold that pencil, how you move the pencil, and also more importantly, how much pressure you're applying to that pencil. All of those three things are gonna make a massive difference to the type of pencil stroke that is created. So if you would like to see um, how I was doing all of this in real time, then as I've said earlier, my um, Patreon is in the description below. I do also have a Patreon library on my website, which is also linked in the description box. And that shows you all of the tutorials that are immediately available before you sign up. So you can see whether or not the tutorials that I've got there are of interest. Now, the wonderful thing about Patreon is you can stay for as long as you like, or you can cancel at any time. It's really flexible. One of the reasons why I absolutely love that platform. So if you've seen my other videos here on YouTube, you'll know that I put a lot of focus on my contrast. This is something that I think is really important and it's I do certainly focus on it more than worrying about the exact colour. The colour can come with each additional layer that we add, we can always be refining that. But if our contrast isn't right, it's going to make our portrait look more flat and two-dimensional. Now what I'm doing here is I'm always darkening up my shadows and then my highlighted layers are getting brighter with each layer that I add. Now you will also see at the top section of the nose it looks white and I haven't put any pastel there yet because that's the white part of the nose where you've got that blaze. Anywhere where we've got a particularly bright highlight I want to be making sure that I'm preserving the colour of that paper or if I'm using a darker coloured paper, something like the dark grey or the brown pastel mat, I want to make sure that I'm putting some light pan pastel pigment down first so that I've got that as bright as what's required. I wouldn't in that situation there want to put the pink layer of the skin from the midsection of the nose all the way up to where the nose band is because then I'm potentially not going to make it look white. By the time I layer my white pencil over the top, it's just going to end up looking like a lighter pink. And that is not what I wanted for that. This is a white part of the face. It's a unique marking that this horse has. I do want to make sure that I have shown that. So the final step here of this muzzle, and it's one of my favourite parts of any portrait, is adding the whiskers. Now these whiskers, like with any animal, they do need to be left until the last layer. The reason being they overlap everything else so we don't want to be adding them in too early because we're going to be making it look like they're on the same level as the rest of the fur which we really don't want. Now in terms of drawing fine but long lines with pastel pencils this is something where the real-time footage where I'm explaining as I'm creating those pencil strokes can be really beneficial because you can see here that I don't have a particularly long or sharp point to that pencil but these whiskers are very, very fine and they're nice and long. It's all in how you use the pencil and the technique. So with this, we wanna be making sure that we have got good control of the pencil and that we are not applying too much pressure to that pencil. The more pressure that we add, we sometimes think, well, that will mean that the detail will look brighter. But what happens is the detail will go thicker because you're applying more pressure and it will also look a little bit grainy because that detail is starting to widen as well. So light pressure is definitely one of the things that's gonna make the most difference here. 
and as you can see I've now got a fairly sharper longer point to this black carbofello but these details are looking as fine as the ones that I was doing with my white pencil yet the lead length there and how sharp they are are both quite different so it does just go to show that it's the technique and how we use that pencil that's going to make the most difference. And here is a photograph of my finished drawing. So every single stage of this drawing is available on Patreon from that gem brow band, the eyes, those very first layers, all the way down to those final details. Every single part is on Patreon in real time. I haven't cut any bits out and I haven't sped anything up either. It's a great one to follow along to. And yeah, if this video was useful, if you could give it a thumbs up for me, that is very much appreciated. I'd be really, really grateful. And if you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube here next week.